The Williamson ether synthesis involves a reaction between an alkyl halide, for example, alkyl fluoride, plus an alcohol, and this reaction requires a base, and the product is going to be an SN2 substitution, where you now form a new bond between that carbon and the alkoxy group. You'll clearly see that this contains carbon, oxygen, and carbon, so COC, or alkyl group, oxygen alkyl group, and that's what we call an ether. This is different from an ester, where you have a carbonyl group, oxygen, and then alkoxy group. Now let's look at the mechanism of the Williamson ether synthesis. The first step involves abstraction of the OH proton by the base, and the base here could be KOH, NaOH, so potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. It could also be KH or sodium hydride. So there's so many different bases that can be used. If we're using KOH, then the active base will be OH minus, and that will abstract a proton from the alcohol, and then these two electrons will flow to oxygen to form an O minus, and therefore you end up with this product, which is basically water, plus, and that's the alkoxide intermediate. So the first step leads to the formation of the alkoxide intermediate. And then step number two, we use the alkoxide intermediate to carry out an SN2 substitution of the alkyl fluoride. You always draw the arrow starting from high regions of high electron density, so starting from the nucleophile or Lewis base, which in this case is the O minus, and then that will come and connect to that carbon while kicking out the fluoride group at the same time, and you end up with this as the product, where now you have a new bond to what was formerly the alkoxy group, and that's the ether product. Thank you. If you enjoyed this presentation, please subscribe.